Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to this morning's message. We hope that your new year has been well thus far and that God will bless you throughout the whole year. Today, I want to talk about trust, trusting in the Lord specifically, especially at the beginning of the new year. It's one of the chief and cardinal things to remember. So that's what we're going to talk about, trust. What do most people trust in? Well, I want to read some passages to you and then talk about that and then go over what God would call us to do in trusting him and then see the reward, the benefit that comes from that. And to remember to never give up. So first, what do some people trust in? Hebrews 13, 5 says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Jesus in the Gospels talks about the, the person, the rich young ruler, or different people who get their lives caught up with the worries and the riches and, and different things in life that can prevent them from seeing him and trusting in him because they're trusting instead on their riches or their possessions as the scripture verse, just, as we just read, says, and also what Jesus says, trusting other things outside of the creator who holds their lives together, who holds all the atoms together, who literally gives them their breath. Psalms 27 says this. This is some other things that people trust in. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. What is this referring to? Well, David is referring to military weapons. For chariots and then for horses, it's usually people's abilities and skills to overcome others and or to defend themselves. You know, having a horse was a was a big uh, big deal if you were trying to defend yourself or you know going into battle or or fighting somebody or doing different things. It it's, you know gave you a lot of strength. Horses are known for strength. Do we do that today? Do we focus on our military? Do we say, oh, our military we can make sure it's really strong because we're trusting in that. Or do you have your might, your, maybe you have guns, maybe you have your strength, maybe you have like your tools, your, your, your equipment, whatever else, and you trust in those things because that's what's going to get the day, day, you know, the day done. It's going to be able to get you through your day, all that stuff. Well, David is saying, you know what, someone who was one of the greatest warriors of all time, possibly the greatest warrior of all time, he said, no, don't trust in your chariots, don't trust in your horses. Trust in the name of the Lord your God. What does he mean by that? We're going to look at that. What is the name of the Lord your God? How do you, why does that matter? I mean, military matters. You know, your tools matter. Your trucks matter. If you want to get the job done, your, your, your different things that you have in your life, your, your system, network, whatever you have that gives you strength, that gets, you, gets the job done, those things matter. But David is saying, no, trust in the name of the Lord. What does he mean? Then 1 John 5, 1 says this, Dear friend, do not believe every spirit. And this could be not just spirit, but also like philosophies and things that people believe in their mind that get into their mind. But test the spirits, he says, to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And this is definitely the case now, right? We've had all kinds of people prophesy all kinds of things. You've, you've heard of people saying things and doing things and, and, and said, oh, this is definitely the way and all oh, this makes a lot of sense or, or this would be the good thing. But are we trusting those words? Some people really believe everything that everybody says. And then some other people, they, they, they believe what they want to hear. And that's not gullible people, but they believe what they want to hear. And then other people believe in things that they think hold up but when it comes down to a test versus God and what they're believing in, it doesn't hold up. It doesn't, it's not the best way. It's not the most beneficial way. It's not the, the, the you know, the way it's going to lead to eternal life or life more abundantly now, as Jesus said, he has come to give us. So why do people do this? Well, primarily because they don't know God yet. So that's our job to go out and tell them about God and through our life, show them the trust of God. Show them the practice, the patience of trusting in God. And that can be hard for us. It's very difficult at times to trust in God. We are all fallen creatures, myself included. We are all fallen and we all don't trust in God at times. We believe in ourselves. We believe in our military. We believe in our power. We believe in our money. We believe in all these different things. But 
God is calling us to trust in his name, as David said. Now, what does that look like? It's the next part of the message. What does that look like? I think the best way to look at that is, is by looking at this one proverb. This is a proverb from King Solomon. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What's your heart? What's your heart, guys? Your heart is your mind, your emotions, your will, your inner workings of your, your inner person. And it's the center of it. It's like the, it's the place where all that stuff is controlled. That center of who you are, your personality, first and foremost, trust in God. Recognize who he is. See him for who he is. Search him. Seek him if you don't know him. Look for him. Jesus says, if you knock, the door will be open. If you seek, you will find. Seek him. And also for us who are, who are, who are believers in his name, do the same thing. Trust in him in your heart. Know that he is God. He's the one that holds everything together. He's the one that gives you your breath. He's the one who started this whole thing. He's the one with all the intelligence you see and all the wonder, all the mystery and everything else and majesty. It all comes from him. Trust in him. Do you think he's created all these things in place, put them all in place, and then just walked away? Even if he did, do you think there's a system there to support and help us out? Trust in him. And lean not on your own understanding is the next part of the verse. Lean not on your own understanding. This is the hard part. Now, why is it even saying this? It's because we will always default to that. Because when we say, okay, we're going to trust in God. I'm going to do this different thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing with God. What ends up happening is we end up going, okay, now what am I going to do now about this? Now, how am I going to do this? And we start trusting in our own ways. Instead, what does his word say? What does his word say? It's called systematic theology. You can, if you really want to look into it, there's many different subjects in the Bible and there's system, systematic look on all of it. And it's where you get the idea of the, the word interprets the word itself. It doesn't need any interpreter. It interprets itself through this systematic approach of looking at things, right? But there's more to it than just that. There's other aspects of the Bible that connect to those systematic things. And then really the big thing is you're walking with God. If you know God and believe in him and trust in him, you're going to have a spirit guiding you, as the word says, and leading you. You're going to be part of the biblical story that continually goes on as we walk with him. And so as you walk in with God, he knows where you are. He knows where you're at in your growth and progress spiritually. He, he's there to lead you and guide you. You can trust in him. You don't have to worry about this thing or that thing. You know, my son and my, my daughters right now, they're walking with, with me and my wife, and we are supporting them and helping them and say, as they walk. I know where they are. I know where they're going and to some degree in, in their development and growth. I mean, you know, now God knows us fully. Do you think he's going to be any less concerned or, 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 you know, helping us in any way? Do you think he's going to be any less a parent or a father or a support than we are? Of course not. So you can just trust in him. He knows where you're at. Lean not on your own understanding. Focus on his word. Focus on his spirit in your life. And then it says this in the next part of the verse. In all your ways, submit to him. In all of your ways. This is really interesting. It's a way of, of, a way of testing the spirits as we were reading before. This is a way of making sure that you're trusting in him. You submit to him. Ask yourself, am I right now following God's word? So another thing I ask myself is, since we've been given the Great Commission, and what am I about to do without well, assist the Great Commission? Or like the big things that Jesus says is important to focus on, faith and justice and righteousness. Is what I'm saying going to bring justice to this person? Is it going to bring righteousness? Is it going to bring salvation? Is it going to bring healing? See, Jesus' name means Jehovah saves, Jehovah delivers, Jehovah heals. And what am I do is what I'm doing? Is it Great Commission involved? Is it going to bring about healing or salvation or support for this person? For everybody, it doesn't matter if it's your enemy or who it is. Am I applying and submitting to God's word in person and character in his name? Am I trust? This is what it means to trust in his name. As David has said, are you doing that? And this is the promise. This is a promise, everyone, that comes with this. He will make your path straight. 
Let me read the whole passage down again. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. What does that mean? You go on a path in the jungle, can be in the desert, can be wherever you're at, right? And the path you're on goes this way and that way. You don't know what's going to come around that bend. You don't know what's over that cliff. And sometimes there's some apprehension about what's going on over here, what's over there, right? But this path that God is talking about, it's a straight path. Ever been that straight path? You can see far ahead of you. You can see what's coming far ahead of you. You know, it's a straight path. It's smooth. It's nothing to worry about. It's an easy path. Doesn't, it's not that the path is easy following God. It's actually very difficult. But in God, in God, it's clear. You know what God has planned for you. His purpose for you, the place where you fit your puzzle piece, the, the place that you're going, you can foresee ahead of time what's going to take place. And he will make your paths straight. All right? Now, what is the benefit of that over a long period of time? And what is the benefit of that if you do that right now? I believe a good passage to look at is Psalms 1 and 2. But Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 echoes what Psalms 1 says. It says, but blessed, this is Jeremiah speaking, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear what heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worry in the year of drought or pandemic or economic depression or failure or social upheaval or anything. It has no worries in the year of drought and all these problems. It never fails to bear fruit. This is what happens when you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight and you will bear fruit in drought. You will continually bear fruit. You will continually produce. God will strengthen you. And it's just a miraculous thing. It might seem paradoxical. It might seem ridiculous. It might, people might be like, ah, you know, and think it's ridiculous or whatever and say all kinds of things about God. But you know what? Trust in God. Trust in God. Let me tell you about somebody who people ridiculed and put down and was like, oh, this is stupid. Uh, right? You ever hear of a guy named William Wilberforce? William Wilberforce spent his whole entire year, years and career in parliament trying to free the slaves in the British Empire. At the very end of his life, instead of having a civil war like we had, one man who trusted in God. We hear the song Amazing Grace. Well, that was his pastor. One man trusted in God, leaning on his pastor, leaning on the other abolitionists who were behind him, slaves and freemen, and other members of parliament, very few, supported him. And at the end of his, towards the end of his life, the slaves, the British Empire were freed. People thought throughout his entire career, ah, 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 whatever. <laughs> All these things that people say, right? Trust in God. Let's get serious. Trust in God. In the end, you look back, look at your creator, look at your savior, look at what he's done to this world. Look at how he's been saving it since he's come. Look at all the different things he's done in your life. Tell yourself your story. Tell your children your story. Listen to their story. Psalms 27, 14 says this, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart. Even when it doesn't make sense, even when things are all out of place, keep on trusting in the Lord, following his word, taking him at his word, taking him simply and seriously like a child that he says, do what he says, obey him, trust him, love him, wait for the Lord. Slaves will be freed. Economies will be better. 
Pandemics will end. People will find justice. God's grace and kingdom will flourish. And one day he's going to come back again. And all things will be changed. And you will see God's salvation in your own life. Can you do that today? And it all starts with trust. Lean in the Lord. Trust the Lord. God bless you all. Thank you for coming to the message. God be with you. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. God bless you guys. Let your roots dig deep in him. Peace be with you.